Path in Time, released just over a year ago and I still feel nostalgic about it. Taking inspiration from games such as Super Mario Sunshine and Banjo Kazooie, which I grew up with as a kid. Wow, such nostalgia. <clears throat> there are so many secrets and so much to explore in these games. What's over there? What's under here? And how do I get in there? Really, how do I get in there? At least I can shake my way in. Thank God for the developer console. Enable sheets, shake. Ghost mode, shake. Well, that was a bit anticlimactic, you probably think. But it's actually a really cool and clever technique that can be used to add a lot of detail to your game. The effect uses a concept called local box projected cube map to fake an interior with only a quad and a cube map. This is a technique used in a lot of games. Spider-Man is either hallucinating or having a bad case of box projected cube maps. The idea is that you model a detailed room and then capture that room to a single offline cube map. This way, your room can have as many polygons as you wish and still have the same performance with the end result. This is because we are rendering a texture and not the entire room. Once captured, we render the cube map with a local projection on a quad or some type of flat surface. The local part is very important because without the local correction, the cube map won't have any location and will represent an infinite box. Instead it will look more like we're staring into the void from a portal. Because the cube map is only captured from a single point, we obviously lose some precision when it comes to perspective, and it becomes quite obvious when we stare right into it. I had in time solved this by not putting that much geometry in the middle of the room, or by tinting the windows making the effect more subtle. If we're going to recreate this effect, we're going to need a cube map. You can either find one online, or create your own. I have prepared a slightly modified script from Unity's documentation that can capture and save cube maps within the editor. I have also downloaded a scene from the asset store which we are going to use to create our own cube map. You can find all the links for the assets in the description. After you download the script, put it in a new folder called editor, which essentially tells Unity not to include the scripts in the final build. With the script set, we can now open our scene that we want to capture and create a new cube map which we find on Legacy. Increase the face size to let's say 512 pixels and check the readable option which is required by our capture script. We also need to create an empty game object which will serve as our capture point. Under game objects you will now find a new menu item called Capture Cube Map. Press it and it will open up a new menu where we can select our cube map and our center point game object. Hit render and observe the beautiful cube map which we just captured. The next step is creating the shader which will do most of the magic. Add a new surface shader, I'm going to call mine box projected QMAP, and open it up in your IDE. In the property scope, we can remove the main text variable. Instead of the texture, we will use type cube. In addition to the QMAP, we need two variables, a box size and a box offset. The box size is the size of the projected QMAP in world units, and the offset, well, it will offset the cube's origin. For our surface input, we will need the world position and the world reflection. We also need to add a shader variables from our properties. Be sure to name them the same for the respective property. This is the local correct function, which will turn our cube map from infinite to finite. I'm a nice person, so I won't bore you with the math, and will of course link the function in the description. If you're truly curious about the math behind it, I have a link for that as well, a read I recommend strongly. In the surface function, we declare a new variable cube map color and assign its value to the local correct function from the world reflection and world position. We then set the output albedo color to the QMAP color multiplied by our tint color. And that's it for the shader. Head back to Unity and create a new material from our shader. Pick the QMAP we rendered before and set the box size to the room size of which you capture. In my case, that's about 6x3. Add a new quad and throw the material on it. And just like that you have yourself your first big room. You can play around with the refraction bump maps to obscure the insight, or create the rotation offset to animate the moving train effect used in a hat in time. The effect maybe isn't the best option when requiring the player's full attention, due to its limitations. However, it's great for adding a lot of detail to your game, very cheap. So stay curious my race, and have a wonderful day!